In the past week, I benchmarked and tested games on Ubuntu 22.04, 22.10 and the latest version 23.04. I tested CPU, GPU, gaming, Wi-Fi speeds, battery, and much more. All of these tests were done on a bare metal laptop. I didn't even boot or triple boot it. I tested everything one after the other for fair comparison. And yes, it took me around 40 hours to benchmark, record, script, voiceover, and editing. But I'm going to share all those results in just under 11 minutes. The poor laptop which has undergone these extreme tests is MSI P62 7R and these are its specs. You can pause if you want to. Let's start with the synthetic CPU benchmark test. I'm going to use Geekbench 6.0.3, the official tab package. Before we talk about numbers, let's get an idea of CPU load and temperatures we have to deal with. While I was running the Geekbench test, the maximum CPU load was around 99% and the average CPU temperatures were around 95 to 100 degrees Celsius under heavy load. Also, I was running the OBS Studio in the background to record this video for the first test. The Geekbench results of the 22.10 almost took 20% performance hit than its competition. Ubuntu LTS version 22.04 has scored 1213 in a single core and 3178 in multi core benchmarks. While the latest release of Ubuntu 23.04 has scored 1213 in single core and 3140 in multi core benchmarks. For the real life CPU test, I am going to use the Kden Live render test. I am using Kden Live dev package for all the tests. I have selected 1080p 60fps 9 minute video. I am going to add just one effect and render this entire video. If I open up NVIDIA usage right now, you can see Kden Live is just using 79 megabytes of 4096 megabytes. Also, the CPU load was around 90 to 95 percent, and the CPU temperatures were around 90 degrees Celsius. I ran the same test for all three operating systems, and here are the results. Now we can see the performance benefits of a new kernel in 23.04, taking an 8 second lead in this test. 23.04 took 15 minutes and 12 seconds to complete, while the others took almost 15 minutes and 20 seconds. To benchmark SSD read write speeds, I am using the KDisk Mark dev version. Here are the results. The results are absolutely identical for this one. In 23.04, there is a slight difference in random read write speeds, but that's it. For the real life disk speed test, I copied one folder of 16.5 GB containing 30 files from one drive to another. And here are the results. In this test, the LTS version 22.04 has 7 seconds lead over the short term releases. Why did this happen? Well, my best guess is the apps on the short term releases aren't that well optimized yet. So the 22.04 takes the lead here. Okay, let's talk about NVIDIA drivers. 23.04 has a driver version of 525, while 22.04 and 22.10 both have 530 versions, which is weird. I could not believe it, so I went online to search what exactly is going on. And then I found this Reddit post having the same issues. One guy is saying after updating to 23.04, his monitor didn't turn on due to a driver issue. Another guy is saying Ubuntu just forgot to add the latest drivers. Log. With a new kernel, I was expecting an even newer driver, but Ubuntu is clearly going in the opposite direction here. I'm using Unigine Heaven 4.0 benchmark test at 1080p Ultra Extreme Settings. Also, the anti-aliasing, I've kept it at 8x to stress the GPU out. And here are the results. Even with the older drivers, 23.04 is ahead of its predecessors by 1 FPS. Only if it had the latest driver, it would have been easily 5 more FPS, but not to be. For the gaming test, I'm going to use TF2, Halo Infinite and CSGO. TF2 and CSGO are both Linux natives, while Halo, we might have to tweak some stuff. For CSGO, we have the workshop map called FPS Benchmarks. I'm running CSGO at 1080p low settings. I ran the same test for all the OS and here are the results. There is a 2% improvement in 23.04 than the others. 
the barest of margins but a win is a win for tf2 i kept the same settings at 1080p low settings for tf2 i just went into a casual server to test the settings if i was alone trying to find something to shoot at my fps was around 100 to 140 but when I finally found someone in the gunfight, FPS was around 70 to 100. I tried my best to get an average out of this. So here are the results. We can see the same trend open to 23.04, even with the old driver of NVIDIA taking the lead in gaming department. There is a solid 9% improvement in the FPS in 23.04. Okay, let's talk about Halo Infinite. It takes up more than 40 gigs of storage in hard drive. I tried it running in 1080p low settings, but well, this happened. I always thought 8 gigabytes of RAM is enough to run games, especially on Linux. But, <laughs> no. Look at this game, man. It's taking up more than 4 gigs of RAM and 99% of my CPU. Also, almost all of my GPU VRAM too. So, I could not record this gameplay with OBS. But in the gameplay, actually, I was getting solid 20 plus FPS, which I see as an absolute win. Here are the results. This is a ridiculous 25% improvement in the FPS, but in all fairness, the FPS is too low. It just might be a small hiccups causing the FPS to shoot too high or too low. So take this with a grain of salt. Now we can safely say the new kernel actually works and gives us slight improvement in games. For the battery test, I opened up Firefox Snap version and played YouTube videos at 1080p 60fps till the laptop dies. And here are the results. 22.04 has significantly better battery life, almost by 26% than others. Why did my laptop only survive 19 minutes in the battery test? Well, my laptop is more than 5 years old at this point and I did not replace the battery yet. So it is what it is. The YT test was too much to handle for our poor laptop. So I tried another test. I used a dev version of VLC media player, turned off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and played the 1080p 60fps video again. And here are my results. The battery backup is just better on the LTS version. In the VLC test, 22.04 has lead by 23% over the others. 22.04 LTS is still the king when it comes to battery life. To test my internet speed, I usually use the Okla speed test. Let's do that. But again, it's almost a similar result. Then I realized why. It's because I'm broke and my net speed is 40 mbps but we can still test it with the wi-fi ftp test i use wi-fi ftp to transfer files between my mobile and laptop and i use 5 gigahertz network so my LAN speed is almost 10 times faster than my internet speed so we can use this to measure the wi-fi performance i'm going to copy a bunch of files from my laptop to my mobile and we'll see the results for once, 22.10 has the lead by 5% in the Wi-Fi speed test, while 23.04 is faster by 4%. The latest Ubuntu promised faster app launch speeds for the Snap apps. So let's test it. I'm using Firefox Snap for this test. Before we do this, let me ask you a simple question. Why do we use Snap or Flatpak apps? I can think of two things. The first one is if the app is not available in the official reports and the second one is to get the new version of the desired app. But as you can see, when I installed a dev version of Firefox, it is actually a new version than the Snaps. It's bad enough that Ubuntu is forcing us to use Snaps but something like an internet browser of all things should be always up to date. Okay, back to the speed test. I'm gonna play a video in slow motion to see this. Well, 23.04 is slightly faster in milliseconds, but let me run this test in a real time. As you can see, in real time, we cannot see any difference. You might notice this difference if you are on a hard drive. If you are a gamer, then 23.04 is a good choice. But then again, there are better gaming distros than Ubuntu. But the LTS version is still a great choice for someone who does use Linux for programming and needs a stable, less battery consuming distro. I still had a lot of crashes in short term releases. For now, just stick to the LTS version. I'm going to compare many distros with each other and Windows too. If you are interested in this type of videos, please consider subscribing. See you in the next one. Peace.